Greetings, my excellent viewers. Welcome back to the Neat Dreams channel. I'm your host, Mr. Neat Dreams Man, and today we are talking about Bill and Ted Part 3. Bill and Ted Face the Music. It is as it is, as it is colloquially known among industry insiders like myself. You know, you people, you might call it Bill and Ted 3, if you're not in the know. But me, I call it Bill and Ted Face the Muse. <laughs> this is a stupid intro. Anyway, Bill and Ted 3. Bill and Ted Face the Music. Let me tell you, I liked this movie. I liked it a lot. You got, you got your Alex Winter. You got your Keanu Reeves. You got your Bill Sadler. You can't go wrong with Bill Sadler. That guy, he's always great. All three of them. They're always the best. Great movie. Check it out. Two thumbs up. I liked it a lot. But I know that's not what you're here for. I know you didn't go tippy-tapping into your YouTube search bar looking for a Bill and Ted Face the Music review. I know you're not looking for, oh, I liked the movie. You want to hear complaints. Complaints and grievances. George Carlin. We'll get to that guy. You want nitpicks and you want to hear what I didn't like about the movie. And there are things that I didn't like the movie. And as much as you want to hear about those things, I want to tell you about those things. So that's why we're here. To complain. I didn't make the system this way, this is how it is. But you want it, I want to give it, that's how it is. It's nobody's fault, it's just the way it is. We gotta rip into this thing. Not really rip into it, I, I, my complaints are pretty, pretty minor. Anyway, my main complaint with this movie is that it falls into this... I think at this point we can call it a trope, or even a cliché where they do this thing now with reboots. You know, everything in Hollywood, it's all woke, quote unquote, w woke. I hate the, oh, I hate what's become to our language. Woke, it's, they call it, this is what people colloquially call it. <laughs> they call it woke. I like that word, colloquially. I try to spit it in wherever I can. So anyway, Hollywood, they have this, quote-unquote, colloquial woke culture, right? Where everything is uh, feminized and everything. So they, they have, there's this trend where they reboot movies now, and all these beloved franchises from the 80s, they bring them back, and now it's like the heroes of those movies weren't really the heroes. They were failures, and now it's their daughters are the the heroes you know it's like you know kathleen kennedy in her the forces female t-shirt with young little ray skywalker and the girl ghostbusters and the girl blade runner that was a really stupid one i mean she was hardly a character in that one but the whole idea that, like, Deckard... We already did a video on Blade Runner. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Anyway, these are all terrible movies. Bill and Ted is actually a good movie. This is... Of all the ones that have done this, this is the best one. But it's still... Like, it still falls into this overall category where it's like, you know, Bill and Ted... They're kind of diminished to prop up these millennial women who are like the real, true saviors of time and space and mankind. And it's not bad. I didn't... I didn't dislike their daughters. Their daughters were fine. I liked their characters. In fact, if this movie had come out like, 15 years ago, before any of these other movies, I probably wouldn't have even noticed it. I wouldn't have even given it a second thought. It's not... 
It's really not that bad, but if this movie existed in a vacuum, it would be fine. But unfortunately, this movie does not exist in a vacuum. This movie exists in the year of our Lord, 2020, where we've already had the girl Ghostbusters, we've had the girl Blade Runner, Chosen One Girl Child, we've had the Spice Girls movie with the girl power. <laughs> you know, we've had all that. We've had the Forces female, we've had the little girl statue in front of the Wall Street Bull. We've had all of this and that. And it's just, you just get, it just wears on you. It just wears you down. Where it's like, I love this movie. I love Bill and Ted. It's great to see them back doing their thing. And really, I mean, what else could they have done with it? You know? What else could they have done? I mean, I suppose they could have had another villain like Denomalos from the second one, like somebody traveling through time trying to mess them up, mess up the future again instead of just, uh, you know, this new thing where it's like, oh, actually it was Bill and Ted's daughters write the song that saves humanity. But, you know, I don't know. They could, yeah, whatever, whatever. What else could they have done? They probably could have come up with other things, but what else could they have done except for, you know, the passing the torch to the younger generation? But that's another thing with the whole feminized thing. You, it's like you want to pass the torch to the younger generation. Okay, I get that. But then it's like, okay, between Bill, Ted, and Rufus, all three of them only had daughters? There's no... There's no male heirs here? Okay. Whatever. The force is female. The future is female. I get it. It's okay. But I really did like this movie, guys. Bill and Ted are great. The parts where it's Bill and Ted traveling through time, meeting their other us's, and it's great. It's great. Keanu and Alex Winter, they're great. It's been so long since we've seen Alex Winter in anything. He was so great in Bill and Ted and Freaked. Freaked is one of my favorite movies. I love Freaked. I love Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's bogus journey had such a profound impact on me as a youth. I love that movie. I love the Game Boy game. Bill and Ted's excellent Game Boy adventure. Let me tell you, you gotta check out Bill and Ted's excellent Game Boy adventure. It is such an underrated classic game. But anyway, anyway, we're supposed to be complaining here. So, I had, a, I had a little analogy that I kind of concocted before I started making this video where I was going to describe uh, how it's really, it's really not that bad. The stuff with the daughters. I like the daughters. I like the actresses who play them. I like their role in the movie. It's good. It's all good. I like it. But there's all these outside stuff that I know... I know it's part of this trend, and I can't erase that from my mind. And I was kind of liking it, likening it to. I'm from New York. I grew up along the shores of the Hudson River. And if you're not aware, the Hudson River is uh, horribly polluted. See, back in uh, like the 70s, 80s, whenever, maybe the 50s and 60s, I don't know, for a long time. Probably from like the 1800s up until the early 90s. Westinghouse GE, you know, they, they own NBC. You might know them as NBC, MSNBC, NBC, Universal, Comcast, and AOL, Time Warner, Disney Corporation. You know, they're all merged into one big thing now. But, um... You know, it's the Everything But Shoes Corporation from Freaked, right? So anyway, Westinghouse GE, that stands for General Electric, they horribly polluted the Hudson River, dumping all kinds of horrible toxic waste in there. So, like, you can't go fishing in the Hudson River and catch the fish and eat the fish out of there because the fish are filled with toxic waste. They're, poisonous fish. You eat the fish, you're gonna get, 
You're going to turn into the toxic Avenger. You're going to have big bubbling things on your head. You, 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 ah, you start melting if you eat fish from the Hudson River. So I was thinking this movie, you know, it's kind of like if somebody caught a fish from the Hudson River and it's been like years, you know, it's been years. They've cleaned it up. There's only trace particles and they do a good job. They season it, they spice it, it's, and you eat it and it's like the tastiest, most delicious fish. But you know that that fish came out of the Hudson River and that it's full of deadly toxic poison and that your face is going to melt and you're going to turn into the toxic crusader, you know? That's what it's like. It's like I'm watching the movie and I'm enjoying it. But I know that there were decisions made along the way that were made as part of this agenda with this ongoing trend. It's a cliche. It's a trope. Is there a TV tropes page for this yet where it's like the heroes from the original movie aren't the heroes anymore. Now it's their daughters because the force is female and the future is female. And I was thinking about this and how it's, you know, it's not even just this, like, modern stuff. It's like, it's like at a certain point, it's like I've gotten, I know too much, you know? It's like I know too much, my eyes are open, and I can't shut them. I can't, like, I want to go back, I've taken the red pill. I'm like Joe Pantaleone in The Matrix. I just want to go back. I just, I just want to go back, you know, because I'm watching this movie and George Carlin shows up, right? And I love those first two movies and I love, I used to love George Carlin, you know, he shows up in this one as a, as a hologram. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it's not like in uh, the new Star Wars movie where they brought back Peter Cushing as Moff Tarkin and it's like, it wasn't like that. It's like he's literally in the movie, he is deceased, and in a future museum, they have a hologram of him talking about the phone booth and stuff. So, so George Carlin shows up, and I'm like, hey, George Carlin, but then in my brain, it's like, oh, George Carlin, and I start thinking about how, you know, I used to idolize George Carlin. He was like my favorite guy ever. And now I look back on his stuff and it's like I cringe because I realize he was like sort of like the prototypical like Reddit atheist kind of guy, you know, and it's like like all this stuff that I used to believe in, you know, where it's like, I mean, you know, a lot of these younger people now, you, you don't know what it was like before the Internet. You know, the, the younger generation coming up, it's so easy for them to be like, ah, you stupid boomers. You don't, you don't know about, uh, all these Illuminati child raping psycho freaks who run everything. Like we really didn't back then. There was no internet. All of your information came from the TV. Imagine that. Imagine all of your information comes from the TV. Like it was very easy back in the 90s, early 2000s, you know, the George Bush, the George W. Bush administration era. It was very easy to believe that George Bush and Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney were fundamentalist Christians and that all of these problems in the world, all the wars and all of this stuff, and it's all the fault of these fundamentalist Christian conservative guys who are like effing everything up and it's like now you look back and it's like now in 2020 does anybody does anybody still believe that George W. Bush and Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney and all those people does anyone actually believe that they were actual Christians and not just putting on an act as Christians in order to you know, get the masses following along to, you know, get votes and get people to like them, get all the stupid, dumb hicks to like them 
and vote for them. And I'm not saying Christians are stupid, dumb hicks. I'm saying that's how they view them. That's how these guys, because they're all Illuminati, blood-drinking, pedophile, Satan worshippers. They're all shape-shifting lizard people from the fourth dimension or whatever. And they're, uh... And we didn't know that back then. It was very easy for a guy like George Carlin. And I'm sure George Carlin truly believed in all the stuff that he said, but he didn't know. He was a clueless old boomer too. But it's like all this stuff. All the blood drinking, child raping, Illuminati, psycho sex freak people who have been in control of our government and media and every aspect of our lives for so long. And this is what I start thinking about when I'm watching a Bill and Ted movie and George Carlin shows up for a cameo and that's why I can't enjoy anything anymore. Everything is tainted now. Everything. It's all tainted. But it's all worth it for the part where the continuing the running joke of Missy having a new husband every movie. The person that Missy is married to in this one is hilarious and makes it all worthwhile. And let me tell you, I love Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan. I love Alex Winter. I love Keanu Reeves. I love William Sadler. I love that guy. I forget the actor's name. He plays, uh, he plays Ted's dad. You know, he has that famous scene in, uh, L.A. Noir. If you've ever played, uh, if you've never played L.A. Noir, it's a video game where it's set in the, uh, I think it's the 1940s Los Angeles. You play a detective and you have to go around interviewing people and... You have to pick up the, the whole selling point of this game. Really, the game is like a glorified tech demo for uh, facial capture software or whatever. So they got all these real actors to do like facial capture and you have to, you have to, you have to interview them and, and ask them questions and look at their subtle facial tics to see if they're lying or not. And the actor who plays Ted's dad did facial capture for that game. He plays one of the people you have to interview and his tics when he's lying are like... He just... He's just like scrunching his face and the craziest... That guy's great. I love that guy. Love Bill and Ted. <sighs> but I'm just... I don't know. I've been poisoned. I've been poisoned with PCBs and whatever. I'm poisoned with deadly toxic waste from Westinghouse GE, NBC Universal Comcast, the Everything But Shoes Corporation has put Zygrot 24 in my food and turned me into a hideous mutant freak. And I just can't enjoy anything anymore. But I did enjoy Bill and Ted 3. So check out Bill and Ted 3. Because I think you're going to like it. It's a good movie. Check it out. <laughs> All right. Catch you later, dudes. Hey, be excellent to each other, right? And party on, dudes. All right, catch you later. <laughs>